So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. Okay, so in today's DAX Fridays, actually we're not going to go through a function, I am going to go through uh, the basics or the fundamentals of DAX, things I wish I knew when I started learning DAX. And uh, I'm going to show you things that threw me off, things that confused me, and I'm hoping that this video will get you started faster than it did with me. I started with uh, DAX, it was when it started, and I know that it was when it started because there was so little information about it, and it was really, really, really hard for me to understand how it worked. And I, I just, I quit it a few times before I actually could pick it up, understand it, and use it in a way that makes sense. So I'm hoping that this video helps you as an introduction, not only to DAX, but also things that you have to watch out for, okay? Things that will throw you off, especially if you come from the business world or from the Excel world. Okay, with that said, how about we get started? DAX 101. So, so excited to do this video. Well, I should have done it a long time ago, actually. But... Uh, the first thing I want to talk about, believe it or not, is what is the difference between a DAX query and a DAX formula? And this is something that threw me off for the longest time. First of all, DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and it's a formula-based language, whatever that means. Basically, you can create formulas with it. That's the way I see it anyhow. So... There are DAX queries and there are DAX formulas. And when you are a beginner in DAX, more often than not, you're going to see a function somewhere, you wouldn't want to use it, you're going to Google it, and you're going to go, probably, this is often the number one hit, which is uh, the DAX documentation. And if you go, for example, to all selected, scroll down, they'll have an example. More often than not, they have an example. And I'm sure if you're new, you've tried to copy this example somewhere else and then it just gave you the weirdest example. If you see here, it says define. And you're probably wondering, like, why does it say define? Can I write define on DAX in Power BI or Excel? No, you can't. If you go to keep filters, you'll see evaluate row. Can you write that in DAX? You know, in Power Pivot and Excel? No, you don't. For example, summarize. Here you start seeing things that, ah, that looks familiar. I can work with that. That was what happened to me. Like, I, that I understand. <laughs> okay. This is a DAX query. This is a DAX query. And this is a DAX formula. Why they're mixing all together? I don't know. My guess is... They did the documentation for analysis services and analysis services you use DAX queries and in SQL Management Studio you use DAX queries. In uh, DAX Studio you use DAX queries. But in Power BI and Power Pivot you use DAX formulas. And uh, they started with DAX queries. Maybe on the newer formulas they say, oh, let's do DAX formulas instead for business users. And now you have uh, both. And it's completely confusing. And it threw me off so many times until I understand I cannot use this in DAX. And then I understood why it is not for the right tool. So, now you know, for a DAX formula, you need the name equal. Now, obviously, they don't put the name. Well, obviously, they should put the name, whatever name. But they don't have the name equal, but then you have the function and then whatever it is. So, so you know, you cannot copy these things right into your DAX formula bar, unfortunately. So DAX queries, analysis services, SQL, DAX formulas, Power Pivot, tabular models. So that is um, Power BI and Power Pivot. Okay, with that said, what type of formulas can you do in Power BI? And there, there are a few. You can do uh, calculated columns. You can do measures. And you can do calculated tables. And I have put them in the order of difficulty. Again, this is from a perspective of something, of somebody that worked with Excel from a business 
perspective, business, as a business user, okay? So calculated column tools are intuitive for me, measures less and calculated tables, not much, actually. <laughs> but but that, that is in the order of difficulty if you are a normal user. So let's go into a little bit more detail. I'm going to explain the concepts here and then we will jump into Power BI and I'll show you the concept slide, okay? So you can see both the theory and the practice. I think that's the, for me, that's the only way to learn. So if we talk about calculated columns, and again, if you come from Excel or if you come from the business world, this is an intuitive thing. You, this is something that you, you will be able to rasp even if you don't perhaps understand everything. A calculated column is basically a column that you add to your table. And when I do my calculated columns, I always go to the data tab where you see the tables and I do it there because then I can see if the calculations are done correctly. And you know, it, it just makes sense for my brain to do it there. You obviously don't need to do it there, but as you, if you've been following me for a while, you've probably seen it. I always go to the data table to create my calculated column. And uh, it is basically a column that you add to your existing table. You go to the formula bar, you write, you, again, we're going to do this live, you write the uh, formula, and then it gets calculated for each row of the table automatically. Okay, this is the beauty of the calculated columns. So if you are come from the Excel world, think of it like you have your data. They are not tables unless you to make them tables. So what you have is a set of rows and cells values, and then you write a formula on the first cell. And for that to be able to propagate to the other cells, you have to click on the corner and then double click, and then it will just, you know, calculate for everything below. Power BI, Power BI will do that by default. You write the formula once and then it just calculates everywhere, you know, on all the rows. And it gets calculated immediately. So as soon as you finish writing the table, the, the formula, if it is, if, if the syntax is okay and it's able to calculate, it will calculate right away. Otherwise it will throw you an error, but otherwise it will just calculate everything. The data, so whatever gets calculated gets stored in memory. That's why you should not use a lot of calculated columns. It gets stored in memory, it takes your, up your memory for doing other useful things, right? And it gets recalculated when the user press refresh or when the table gets offload from the memory and gets, has to be loaded again. For example, when you open and close Power BI or Excel. So you open, when you close it, the memory uh, gets released. And when you open it again, it has to recalculate that. Okay. Simple thing. Now, if we go to the next level, it is a measure. And a measure is something that is not intuitive at all. I think it wasn't, uh, let's talk about me. It was not intuitive at all for me coming from the business world and coming from the Excel world. What are the main differences? Well, a measure needs an aggregator to work. And I remember when I started in Power BI and, and it was in Excel. When I started in Excel and DAX, I read that everywhere. It's like, it needs an aggregator to work. What is an aggregator? I, it was that bad. <laughs> it was really that bad. Like, what is that? Well, what they are trying to tell you it is that you need to have a function wrap around the column that you want to use. You don't need to do that in calculated columns, but you need to do that in measures. And there is a reason why, and it is because it is a columnar database. It is too advanced. If you are a beginner, don't go there yet. I, I really recommend you. I say, actually, you probably should go and watch my body pack series to understand how the engine works and it will give you probably an idea. I will talk about it more in later videos, but what you need to know is you cannot use just a column, put it in there and have it to calculate everything, anything at all. It was just, it won't work. And that threw me off all the time. I was put in what it was called before. I haven't heard it for a while, actually, but it was called naked columns. And a naked column is basically a column without a function. 
And you can have naked columns on calculated columns. You cannot have naked columns on measures. So all your columns have to have a function around. And I'll show you that in a second in Power BI so you see what it is. And you have no idea how many times I tried to put naked columns on measures and I ended up creating a calculated column because it let me do what I wanted to do. And my models were calculated columns, basically. But here's the thing, you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. You have to start crawling before you can run. So are you creating too many calculated columns? Number one, is the model working? Yes, it's not too slow. It's not. So live with it. You will get better. You will get better. As long as you're not a consultant, you're doing this as a business user, who cares, really? But the best way to do it would be a measure because it only gets calculated when it's used, basically, and it's not used in your memory. So measures need an aggregator. You need to wrap around your measure in the function, in a sum, in a count, in a summary, in a whatever, in order to be able to work. And there is something called IntelliSense, uh, which I'll show you too, uh, that it will help you not to make that mistake, but it, it gets a little bit annoying. I'll, we will go through that in a second. Now, do you remember the calculated columns get calculated direct, as a, immediately? Measures do not. Why? Well, here's the thing. Let's say you say, okay, Ruth, I would like you to get your help. Give me the sales, how much sales I have or how much money I made in, in my company. You're like, well, I have an option. I can give you all the sales for all the times, all, all, all. You probably, that's not what you want. So when you put, let's say you create a measure, total sales equal, that's what I do when you ask me to do sales, equal sum. Remember, it's a measure. You have to put an aggregator. You have to put a function. So I write sum, and then I pick the sales column. And when I put that in the canvas, it's going to calculate all the sales ever. All the sales you ever had. So I'm going to give you that. You tell me, oh, I want a sales of my company. There you go. And they say, well, no, I meant this year. Oh, you mean 2019. So you might say, oh, do I have to create a new measure to do 2019 sales? Not necessary. The only thing you need to do is you leave the measure what it is. You put the year filter on the pane. And this measure will recalculate and give you the 2019 sales, which is intuitive, right? Because we've been doing that with pivot tables for years. So you're like, what's the, what's the deal on that? And well, there's not a big deal. And that is something that it will come intuitive to you. But the fact the, when you reflect on it, it's actually a very, very cool thing that one measure can give you thousands and thousands of different results depending on what you have around it. So you said, oh, Ruth, I want to have sales by product. I just put the product column into that same sales measure and it will give me the results, the correct results, if, if the model is correct. But that, that's another video for another day. So how cool is that? I think it's absolutely fantastic. One measure will give you thousands of results. And that's for me, that's what makes Power BI and DAX so powerful because you don't need to do any advanced DAX to get advanced solutions or answers to your questions. Then, obviously, as you get more mature into mining data, you're going to want to have more difficult questions to get answered that probably requires more difficult DAX, but you can do a lot with very simple DAX in just one measure. So that is super cool. So it is calculated once you put it in the canvas and you tell it, okay, what, what sales do you want to have by year, by product? And then you start adding filters to it. It needs, that's what we were talking about. We, it needs context to calculate results. That's the way it is. So the same formula again produces different results i love that i think it's a beauty of it is fantastic the same thing gives me thousands of results so cool 
the measures are so useful. It's like a Swiss knife of calculations. Next, in the hierarchy of uh, DAX uh, formulas is the calculated tables. Here's the thing. If you are new to DAX, don't worry about calculated tables. You will come on a need to know basis. So there will come a time in your DAX journey where you need to create a DAX uh, table or calculated table because there is no other way. Something that, for example, calculated tables are used is to create calendars. I would not create calendars in DAX. I think it's better to do them in Power Query. It's up to you. But you can create, for example, as a beginner, I've seen a lot of models that have uh, DAX um, calendars. So it is an option, obviously. But what's the deal with calculated tables? Well, you can, for example, introduce new data into your model. For example, what we talked about a calendar. You can create new tables on your model using DAX. And that is what you probably are going to use your calculated tables more often than not. So it allows you to basically have calculations on different granularities on separate tables. It's not that you want to do that for every time you want to calculate something at different granularity, but sometimes you want to or you need to. Again, when you have the need, you unlock. And they are recalculated only when the data is pulling from gets recalculated. Okay. So calculated tables are like, for example, I want to have you see the table for, I don't know, top selling customers for whatever reason, because I want to display in a specific way or I need it in a special format for a specific visual or whatever. And then you can create a, a table that looks like that. I just calculated tables for um, building my DAX functions, actually, my DAX formulas. So when I need an intermediate table that needs to get calculated, I create that. And I, you've seen me doing it through the DAX Fridays videos. I've, I've calculated the table first, you know, the intermediate table, and then I do whatever I need, the sum or the count, or and then I remove all that and I do it in a measure. But it's for me to see how the data looks like, okay? This is something that you would normally do in DAX Studio. I do it in calculated table in Power BI. Hey, don't, don't judge. Okay, so you have calculated columns, you have measures, and you have calculated tables. Let's go into Power BI and do some of these. Let's see. So here we have the uh, North Wind data set. And when you go here into modeling, you have measure, column, and new table. So the measure is obviously measure, column is the calculated column, and the table is calculate a new table. Okay, so new measure. If we click on that, perhaps we should start with calculated column, right? So I, you don't have to, but I always go to the data table, as I told you, because I, I like to see my tables. Uh, I, I do. I like to see actually my tables here and, you know, my columns to see what I'm going to create. And then you go to new column and uh, Let's say we want to calculate uh, sales total. You give it a name, equal. You know in Excel you have to put the column equal. Here you don't have to, just equal. So sales total. And now here you can write just a name. Now when you're writing calculated columns, write always the uh, table name and the column name, okay? And then times uh, quantity. And that's it. This is what you would do in Excel. This is exactly what you would do in Excel. Do you remember what I told you? Once you click enter, it will get calculated for every row of the table immediately. And whatever we have in here will get stored in memory. Really, really good. Okay, excellent. Let's move to a measure. And I do my measures in here. I don't know. Don't, don't know why, but I do. 
anyhow, so we go here. If you don't click on anything, let me delete that. I will show you later what that is. If you don't click anywhere and just click, click on new measure, the new measure will get created on the first table. I don't think that's ideal. You have to click on a table and then you can click on new measure. If you get it wrong, you can change it here. You can change to which table you want it to, to end up in. Here you do exactly the same thing. You give it a name. Uh, we're going to do uh, all these counts. Now it is a measure, so you have to have a function wrapping your column. So we have here the discount field and we want to add see how much this can have given out so you want to sum all the discounts right so you want to sum and then you write discount and that's it you don't need to do anything else put it in there here will give you the values as you could see I wrote, let me do it again. So you start writing and then you can go with the arrows down and then tab. And that will complete the, uh, the function name. And then you can start writing the name of the column. And then you do the same with the arrows up and down and then tab. Okay, so that's the way to, to write it. Now, again, what do you remember that I said that for a measure, your column has to have a um, aggregator. So it has to have a function. What happens if it doesn't have a function? Let's do this again. Shift enter will take you to a new line. And now we're going to try to put the discount field without the aggregator. So we want to write here discount. And as you can see, and this threw me off all the time, you don't see this field at all it doesn't show up the only thing that shows up is measures because it has an aggregation already it has a function wrapped around that's why it's showing you that so what what is happening here this is called intelligence and this is a way for the dax engine or power bi to help you write dax formulas correctly so because it knows that you cannot create a measure without a function first around the field name is not giving you the option to select a field name at all whatsoever. It's just saying, I'm not going to give it to you because it's not going to produce a right result. Is it right or wrong? I don't know. I really was confused in the beginning because it didn't show up. And then at the end I learned like, Ooh, okay, so if something doesn't show up, it means it's not allowed. And that's basically what you need to know. So if you're trying to do something and it doesn't show up in the autocomplete, it means that what you are trying to do is not possible to do, so you have to do something else. So as soon as we put here sum, or we put, let's put something else, count. And we, I put, do you see that the tables start to show up? The, the tables of the field names? This is why. This is why you need to have an aggregator. And as you saw here, this is not calculated at all. It's only calculated when you put it in here. It says all these counts, awesome. And this formula will recalculate once I put a filter. So if I put 1998 in here, this is going to get recalculated, hopefully. Maybe that was a bad, or maybe my model is broken. <laughs> yeah, do you see? It gets recalculated. So now you know. Now, calculated tables. To create a calculated table, I always go back to this date. Again, for the same reason. You, can't, you, you can do it without going in there, I just do it because then I can see the results right away, basically. So if you go to the new table, you can do all kinds of things. You could say, okay, I want to see just customers from 1998, or I want to see customers that bought more than five items, or I want to see whatever and create a table for that. 
um, one of the things that I've seen people use it for, again, I not like super happy about that. I prefer cal calendars to be on uh, Power Query, but you can create a calendar auto. So you say to Power Query, uh, to Power BI, give me a calendar. You need calendars to be able to use time intelligence, okay? Always put a calendar in your model. Always, 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 period. It's very rare you won't need it. Sooner or later you end up needing it, so why not create it? So here you have the calendar auto. What calendar auto does is it will look into your data and it will find the first date and it will look into your data and find the last date. And then it will create a calendar for those dates. And I think this is very, very useful for finding first date and last date without having to go through all the tables. So I can create my own calendar in Power Query. That's what I use it for, nothing else. Then I delete it. But here you can see that we just created a new table. It is in here. It's a, it's a table that has the same rights as any other table. And you can use it the exact same way as any other table. So that's how you create tables. Again, as a beginner, you will not see the use for it, but eventually you will. So don't worry, it'll come to you. OK, so how about we move on? into our presentation now that you know now that you know a little bit more so we've talked about uh, what DAX is the difference between DAX queries and DAX fact functions we talk about the type of DAX formulas DAX queries and DAX formulas we talk about the different types of DAX formulas you can do you have calculated column measure calculated table and to be able to create this DAX magic, you need to have DAX functions. Okay, so let's move into DAX functions. And DAX functions are so, so important. Let me do it with an example, okay? Let's say that, you know, we all have all these do-it-yourself projects, things that we like to do outside our work. Let's say I want to start all painting. Okay, and I saw this, I thought, oh, that is absolutely magical. I want to recreate that. And I go to the shop, you know, to buy all the tools that are needed for this. And they say, okay, which pencils do you want to have? And I say, don't know, don't know. And the thing is that to be able to recreate these, you need certain types of pencils that will do certain effects. So, for example, to get like these smooth things, maybe I need like a, you know, like a cheese thing like <laughs> you know, to, I know nothing about art sorry um to to get like this small splash things maybe I need to have like a small pencil like so depending on what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to recreate I will need to have one pencil or another if this doesn't resonate with you think about your do-it-yourself project with you want to build a you know a bookshelf for example and you have all these carpenter tools and you have no idea how to use them because you've never used them. And I'm, I'm sure you will be able to recreate a bookshelf. I will be able to recreate this without a problem, but it won't look the same. And it, it will probably lose some of the charm of actually knowing what you're doing, you know? So knowing which pencil to use, knowing which tool to grab for a certain thing in your do-it-yourself project is the same thing as knowing your DAX functions. Depending on which DAX function you use, you will be able to do one thing or another without actually thinking about... You, you always need to think about context, obviously, but you still need to know which DAX function to use for a specific job. Does it make sense? So, for example, if you have two tables and you have a relationship between those two tables, you will use one DAX function. If the relationship you have between those two tables is inactive, you have to use something else. And if there's no relationship between these two tables, yes, you still can work with them, but you need to use another DAX function. And you need to know, you need to know, you need this the same way that I take these pencils. I need to know that if I grab this pencil, it would do this. And if I grab that pencil, it would do that. And if you do that, oh my Lord, your DAX will get so much easier, so much easier. So I am 
extremely fortunate that I've been doing these Dax Fridays because it forced me to go through each of the Dax functions in detail. Kind of. Now I'm, I'm not like dig that deep down on all the Dax functions. I well, don't worry. But extremely important because now depending on the situation I have I say oh I can pick this or I can pick this okay because I know they are there and I know how to use them it is very 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 powerful so I really recommend you to go and check the DAX functions and learn the DAX functions follow DAX writings or, or follow somebody else that is doing the functions so you understand how they work it is so so useful I have on my website the DAX glossary where you can go through each of these uh, functions and it will give you the example, it will give you the videos, if I've done more, more than one video you will see it here. And these are functions that work, it's not like, you know, the sorry, Microsoft documentation where you have tax queries and you have all kinds of stuff. These you can follow, examples that you can follow along, okay? They will help you. So make sure you spend time learning these tax functions. It's super useful. Obviously, you need to understand context. I will do a video about context. Don't worry about that. But I find that learning tax functions has proven more useful to me. But maybe it's because I'm lacking still some knowledge. Who knows? I'm learning, right? Like you. So, some words about, uh, not that one, some words about uh, DAX functions before we wrap up this video. Um, DAX functions, they reference a column or a table. A column or a table and it is because the DAX engine is a columnar database so it works in columns so it lets you refer to a column or multiple columns which is a table okay so it very important coming from Excel I wanted to reference values I was clicking onto that green thing into the cell and I couldn't access it and it was so frustrating like why I cannot not click it obviously now I understand why it is because Power BI or the DAX engine is compressing the data to be able to do calculations very very fast so it cannot give you access to that value does it it doesn't mean that you cannot get access to that specific cell yes you can to get access to specific cell values guess what you need the specific DAX function so if you know which DAX function to pick, you're good to go. So you can do that, definitely. If you want to do row by row calculations, you know, they are not in columns or tables, a so row by row, like you do in Excel, you can do that, but you need, guess what? A specific DAX function. Yes, you do. So if you know which DAX function to pick that does row by row calculations, you're good to go. Do you start to see how important it is to know DAX functions? So a function will return a value or return a table. A lot of the DAX functions return tables. And DAX, as a Power BI, does not, you know, the measures the returns a value. It does not return a table. It returns a value only. So the functions that return a table is an intermediate table, so we can do some extra calculation on it. Okay, and that's something that threw me off so, 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 so much. So when you go to the documentation, you have to check if that function returns a table or if it returns a value. Because if it returns a table, you can only use it as a table on a calculated column. Okay, you cannot use it on a measure like that. You can use it on a measure, but then you have to have another function that will return, put that table into a value that will get returned. Okay? I know, it's super confusing. This threw me off so, so hard. But a DAX function that return a table, don't put it just on a measure. It won't work. Put it on a calculated table, okay? That definitely will work. And the 
table results are only allowed on calculated tables. So we talked about that already. So this is all for part one. We've been talking for like half an hour. Sorry about that. But I thought it was important. So learn your DAX functions, practice them, love them, and your DAX calculations will get so much easier. I will continue with the DAX 101 future videos, but until then, it is gorgeous Friday, it is sunny shining, it's summer, so have a great weekend, and I'll see you again on Monday. Bye!